Good morning. I want to begin today by acknowledging the Vidigal people who are the traditional owners of the land on which the UNSW main campus is situated. And I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. I also extend a particular welcome to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders who are amongst the group today. My name is Andrew Lynch and I'm a professor and the Dean of the Faculty of Law and Justice. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the faculty and specifically to this welcome session this morning for term three. It's really wonderful to have you start your study with us uh, in your new program. The group on this call comprises students commencing several of our programs, the Bachelors of Law and Criminology and Criminal Justice, the Juris Doctor and the Master of Laws. We know that there's a great diversity of experience across these cohorts, with some of you beginning your university journey as an undergraduate, while others are coming to us for perhaps their second or even third degree. We also acknowledge that across these programs, we welcome students who are Sydney locals, students who have come from elsewhere in Australia to study with us, and also some of you who are joining us remotely alas at the moment as international students. Given the ways in which individual movement has been so severely restricted over the last two years during the COVID pandemic, we express our appreciation to all of you for choosing to study with us at UNSW, but extend an especially warm welcome to those of you who are starting with us from somewhere overseas. To give you a sense of the diversity of our student body, which we pride ourselves on as a real strength of the faculty, in this commencing group alone, we are welcoming students from Sweden, Canada, the United States, Cambodia, China, India, Korea, New Zealand, Taiwan, Singapore, Iran, Hong Kong, Mexico, the Czech Republic, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, Indonesia, France and Malaysia. We are really proud of the programs that you will be studying with us. Students commencing the Master of Laws may be drawn to that program as a complement or extension to their existing qualifications and professional experience. Our Master's program is distinctive in providing a qualification open to those coming from the legal profession, but also from beyond it, all looking to deepen uh, their knowledge of law's operation in our world. The JD or Juris Doctor is also a postgraduate qualification, but for those who are looking to train and qualify for admission to legal practice through the study of our foundational core courses, complemented then by electives across our Bachelor and Master's program. The Bachelor of Criminology and Criminal Justice, the BCCJ, is a program that this faculty proudly shares with the School of Social Sciences in the Faculty of Arts, Design and Architecture. Established in the early 2000s, the program draws on UNSW's distinctive strengths in criminology, criminal law and the social sciences more broadly. And the LLB is, of course, our foundational degree, which we've now been teaching for 50 years. I'll shortly be introducing you to the directors of the programs um, that you are studying who are going to join us for the question and answer session uh, at the end of this presentation. No matter where you are coming to us from, what brings you here and whether you've studied with us before, whether recently or long ago, or are altogether new to UNSW, welcome. You are joining a faculty with a history, tradition and a culture of values, engagement, respect and commitment to justice, which we think sets us apart. The UNSW faculty was established on the basis that university study should engage students in a critical tradition that questions law's operation in the world in the pursuit of just outcomes for all in accordance with the rule of law. All that is encapsulated very neatly in the words of our founding dean, Hal Wooten, which hangs in the, in the law building foyer on a banner that you'll see when you're able to join us. And it says a law school should have and communicate to its students a keen concern for those on whom the law bears harshly. This year, the faculty, which has long claimed to be a place where law meets justice, crystallises this in our very name, having recently become the Faculty of Law and Justice. In part, this reflects the move to the faculty of the BCCJ, 
a non-law degree that broadens our program offerings. But as I've already indicated, justice has been central to the distinctive identity of the faculty since its establishment, and we embrace our new name as one that conveys to our students and the outside world what it is that we're all about. This name change comes at an appropriate time in our history, for in 2021, we mark the 50th anniversary of the faculty's first teaching year, a very significant milestone. Well, what a big event this is going to be. You only turn 50 once, and in the case of the life of a law school that also now includes criminology, it means we're dealing with a remarkable history of educating students, having an impact in Australia and internationally, and hopefully making the law a bit more just for everyone. When UNSW decided to introduce a law degree, it was the first time since the 19th century that a new law program had been introduced in New South Wales. When law was founded at UNSW, there were no female members on the academic staff. Today, they make up more than half and dominate their fields. Our founding dean, Professor Hal Wooten, said that a law school should have and communicate to its students a concern for those upon whom the law bears harshly. So right from the beginning of our faculty's life, the idea that law doesn't exist in isolation, but which is harnessed in pursuit of justice is really integral to our approach. I've been studying criminology for two years now, along with my law degree. Um, and it's honestly a very interesting degree, considering that um, it, it does tie a lot to your law degree, particularly the crime and the criminal process and criminal law subject. It gives you a very nice insight into policy um, within the criminal justice system. And I think that's very important when you're doing black and white theory all the time and you're just looking at the practical things. It's very nice to look at the policy insights um, into it and see the different ways that we can operate the criminal justice system. Law is dynamic. It responds to contemporary problems and also the emergence of new technology. So one of the things that we're looking at at the moment is the rise of artificial intelligence and digital decision making and how those intersect with legal regulation. I think it's also important that we recognise that a good legal world, a strong legal world can never occur, can never come to fruition without skilled ethical lawyers. We're developing skills in our students that mean that they're able to face the changes of today, 10 years from now, 50 years from now. When I look in the classroom, I'm so proud to see such a, a diverse collection of students. We've got gender diversity, we've got multicultural diversity, and I believe that over the next 50 years that diversity will further develop in the legal world as well. That's going to really change what it means to be a lawyer. It's going to change what it means the law can do for the community. And that's something that the Faculty of Law and Justice absolutely is on the forefront of, and I've no doubt will lead over the next half century. One of our proudest achievements is the fact that we've educated over 100 Indigenous lawyers, more than any other law school in the country. But we can also point to big law reform debates. It might be prison reform. It might be the idea of bills of rights. It might be the idea of better commercial laws. Uh, this is a faculty in a community that has driven change, driven law reform, and never starts from a perspective that the status quo is OK. The contribution of the faculty also goes on in a, in a number of ways which it's impossible to track through the efforts of our alumni as they go forward in their careers in a way that is consistent with the ethos of the faculty as a place where law meets justice. There's always lots on at the faculty, even when we can't physically be there. Um, so please watch for notices of events and public lectures. You're always welcome to attend many of them, whether they're online or, or situated on campus. And please try to make sure you get along to some these uh, experiences really will de deepen your understanding of your law studies, help you think about where your program might end up taking you, develop your own professional networks, and most importantly, to enjoy and enrich your time studying with the faculty. It's my pleasure today to be introducing you to professional and academic colleagues whose role is to assist you while you are studying at UNSW. But I also want to emphasise that students have been critical to the development of the UNSW faculty's distinctive culture of engagement and support. I strongly encourage you to take out membership of the Law Society or Criminology Society and to make friends who will be your colleagues in the years to come. Hear about what is going on 
and contribute to what is now your faculty. I will now hand over to Siobhan Ryan, our careers manager, holding qualifications in both criminology and law, and someone who is a critical part of the faculty's support for students as they work through their degree with an eye on where they want their study to take them. Thanks, over to you Siobhan. Thank you, Andrew. And again, welcome to UNSW Law. Um, as Andrew said, I've worked as a criminologist for over 10 years, and then I came back and studied law at UNSW. So I know the exciting journey that's ahead of you. Um, and I also know that some of you will be thinking, but where will I end up and what will my career look like? And with that in mind, UNSW Law and Justice is the only school to have an additional career service within the faculty or school above and beyond UNSW central careers. And that is because you have so many pathways open to you. Now, students often switch off at this point um, and think, I don't really need to think about careers yet. That's true, you don't need to think about your career yet, but you should avail yourself of all the opportunities at UNSW to figure out your career interests and be ready to undertake part-time employment by second year onwards within your chosen career um, and to establish networks for the future. Your class colleagues today will be your work colleagues in the future. And, and I know that from my experience, when you go out there and start practicing, you will start to meet the fellow students that you're with today uh, across the profession, whether it's in criminal justice or whether it's working as a lawyer. We are here to assist you identify the best career for you and to help you prepare applications um, and to figure out your interests and your skills. So we have UNSW Central Careers, but also the Law Faculty Careers Service. So Central Careers has a range of resources available to you, including one-on-one -on -one counselling appointments, but so does my law faculty internet. So within the my law faculty internet within the School of Law, there are resources and there's a jobs board. So on my law, you will find criminology and law resources um, and it's updated every one to two days with new opportunities, including exclusive opportunities such as associateships um, or paralegal or opportunities in criminal justice that are exclusive to UNSW Law and Justice. So please go on there, have an explore. You will see from the next slide some of the common career legal pathways open to you. So this is from working in a large commercial law firm to government to a career in social justice. Now there is a range of opportunities and that's because the skills are so, so transferable. Doing a degree in law or criminal justice is so versatile and offers you so many pathways. On the next slide, you will see, you know, opportunities for criminology and criminal justice students. And again, so many different pathways that will, you know, um, be offered to you to suit your interests and your skills as you move through your degree. So law and justice provides you with unique learning opportunities to both strengthen your employment prospects and which best suit your career and interests. So there's integrated um, in work integrated internships offered through the faculty. This is a fantastic way to receive academic credit for one day of work per term. So it, hence it lowers your academic load. So for example, you might be doing three courses in a term, but as you progress later in your career, you can do two academic courses and do one work integrated learning. So you will get credit for that, but you're out in the workforce gaining employment, understanding that career pathway. And it's a great result if you go out and you work and say, this is not my career pathway. That too is information and it's informing you what your interests are. Hopefully in the future, international exchange will be more accessible. But in the meantime, try participating also in credit for credit in, in competitions or mooting, which develop your research, your debating skills, all of these sort of opportunities that are listed on the slide, they will strengthen your skills for employment and networking with other students and also with organizations or law firms, whichever is sponsoring that organization. So the career service complements these opportunities with, with exclusive internships and programs as well. And we host panel discussions with professionals which highlight particular career pathways as well as exclusive employment opportunities. I will tell you right now that in September and October there are three events coming up. Um, one is in-house counsel 
Um, that is for lawyers and law students. But what is it like to work? As, what is in-house counsel and what is it like to learn to work as in-house counsel? There's also going to be a panel event with the Austra uh, Australian Federal Police and the Office of uh, the Director of Public Prosecutions. That is geared towards both criminal justice students and law students. There are a range of opportunities available working in enforcement, investigations. That is happening on the 28th of September. On the 7th of October, we also have legal aid. And there are so many practice areas within legal aid, they're actually doing it just for the full hour. And all of the panel events will include uh, HR to talk to you about gaining relevant experience now so that in a couple of years time you will be ready and and um, prepared to apply for those career pathways. So all of these sort of opportunities and attending them will help you start to match your, your interests and skills with the right career pathway for you. In term three, there's also career counselling with myself. It's available on Monday and Tuesday afternoons. Feel free to come along. Again, it might be one of those things you think I'll, I'll do it in second and third year, but just to let you know it's available. So whatever your program or stage of study, it's a good idea to keep an open mind during your studies. Explore your options. Take a, a advantage of all the opportunities that are presented to you. If I have one regret from my time at UNSW, it's that I didn't get more involved and go to everything to broaden my understanding of the opportunities and the career pathways that I could go into. You may discover career options as you progress you through your career that you didn't consider previously. Now, finally, what do employers look for? And I'm putting this out there because it's never been more important to start to think more laterally and broadly about your career. Both, you know, the criminal justice degree, uh, the LLM, the, the you know, if you're studying law in the JD um, or the LLB, you need to think more broadly and laterally. OK, we need to pivot in COVID. OK, but once you actually get to in, uh, interview stage, you need to think about the skills that they're looking for and resilience, teamwork, working um, on you know self-directed you know work they've never been more important now you can gain these skills not just through employment but through joining societies and clubs so enjoy your time at UNSW you know explore what's available through ARC join the criminology society join the law student society there you will hear about events that are happening they have so many things happening but you're also networking you know, you're getting involved, you're analyzing, you're um, achieving um, and you're developing your interpersonal skills and all of those will help you with your employment as you move on later. Now, one final thing I, I ask as we, you know, which, which comes up from students um, is, do I need a LinkedIn account? Yes, you do. Unfortunately, because I'm not great with technology, but yes, you do. And I encourage you from today to do that, set it up. If you go to the My Law website, you will see on the resources page how to set it up, how to position yourself and brand yourself, how to join and follow organizations and agencies. Because agencies and law firms, they track who follows them. OK, so you need to show interest in their firms, in, in those uh, social justice agencies. You need to be aware of opportunities and events that they have uh, posted. They post positions on there as well. So all of these informal contacts will help you as you move towards employment from your second year onwards within your industry. Look, I'll sum up by saying that you don't need to think very seriously about your career pathway now. You just need to know that we are here to help you and all of the opportunities that we present to you through the faculty and through the societies are to help you to explore, engage and realise your interests going forward. So please go out there, um, join those societies and you know, stay involved. Come along in September, October to our faculty events. Now, um, I'm going to introduce, we're going to open up to Q&A. I'm going to introduce um, those um, who are here today to take your questions. So um, Andrew Lynch, the Dean, is going to stay on the call, so feel free to, to address any questions to Professor Andrew Lynch. But we also have Natalie Klein. Natalie Klein is the Director of Postgraduate Studies. And feel free to post questions, and we've had some submitted already um, in relation to postgraduate studies. Leon Tyrrell is the Director of the JD Studies Programme and Helen Gibbon is the Director of Undergraduate Studies. And so with that, I'm going to invite you to post questions um, on the chat and we will, um, I will direct them to the relevant person. 
In the meantime, we have had some questions submitted already. Um, and I will just go to one, which is a, a question that we can't that comes up frequently, which is, is there an opportunity to do a research thesis during the LLM? Um, I'll direct that question to Natalie Klein, who's our director of postgraduate study. Natalie. Thanks very much, Siobhan, and I'd also like to extend my welcome to all the students starting uh, this term. In terms of the LLM, there is an opportunity to do a research thesis. You wouldn't normally do it in your first term, so don't get worried about that, but it is something worth thinking about. If there's a particular question that's of great interest to you in one specific area of law, then the research thesis provides you with an opportunity to really dive into that and ideally be able to produce a paper that can be published down the track or perhaps if you're thinking of further study even provide the foundation for a PhD. And one thing to bear in mind also is that the research thesis can count towards uh, the courses that you do for specialization as well. So if you're interested, for example, in environmental law and justice, and there's a specific question perhaps about climate change, then you could do a research thesis on that and it would count towards your courses for the specialization. So it's something worth thinking about. It gives you an opportunity to work with a particular staff member who can su supervise that thesis. It just involves a bit of pre-planning around it to be able to be ready to go with that thesis and with your supervisor um, in uh, your future terms. So thanks for the question. Excellent. Thanks, Natalie. We've had a practical question, which I love because it's all about the practicalities. Um, a student is asking, is a student card necessary if studying from overseas? If not, how do we access library resources without a student card? I'm actually going to give this one to the Dean. Um, let's hear it from the source, um, how that student can access library resources without a student card, without a student card. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Siobhan. No, that is a, it's a very understandable question. Uh, but as you can imagine, we have already had students who have started with the university over the last two years who have been in exactly that situation. So although we do still have uh, physical student cards available. Uh, it's not necessary to have one of these to access res resources. The, the critical thing is to have your student ID. Um, so you'll be able to log in to the UNSW library um, website and access all of the online databases. Uh, increasingly, the collection is a digitized collection. Uh, and so just by entering your ID and uh, password, uh, you know, you'll have access to all of those things. If you've got any um, issues around that um, in terms of, you know, your ID should be on all correspondence you will have received from the university, but setting your password and so on, that can be directed to the IT Service Centre. Thanks. Thank you, Andrew. Um, the next one, I'm, I'll, I'll, next question is for Helen, um, who's our Director of Undergraduate Studies. Um, again, what happens if I fall sick and I miss my online chat? Where do I get the resources to catch up if I miss classes? Yeah, that's a really good question. Thanks, Siobhan. For each of your courses, Moodle is your source of truth. So if you're unwell and you um, and you can't attend classes this term and we're starting online, then you would look at Moodle to see what resources were included for that week, that class is learning, and that will likely include um, pre-recorded lectures that you can obviously listen to in your own time and any other activities that were planned for that tutorial. And if you still have any questions about whether there's other activities or material that you've missed out on because you couldn't attend your online tutorial, then just get in contact with your uh, course convener. Just send them an email and ask them a question. They'd happily answer that question or post questions to the forum on each of your um, course pages. Great, thanks Helen. Um, this is a question for Leon, um, who is the Director of JD Studies. Um, I'm a commencing JD student. I'm interested in the opportunity to pursue the Bachelor of Civil Law program at Oxford. At what stage in the JD do I apply for that? Good morning, everyone. Um, yeah, it's a great question. We, we often have inquiries about this. So this is an opportunity that comes up after students have completed two full years here or 96 units of credit. So it's something you will start preparing for in your second year um, and start making inquiries about it then and, and putting in the application. So it's, it, it comes at the uh, completion of your, your full two years here at UNSW.
Thanks, Leon. Thank you. Um, I'll take the next one, which is what's the career opportunity for international students studying online? Very good. Um, I will say that there are a lot of um, both firms and agencies who are doing virtual internships now and actually offering paid work remotely. We also at UNSW were very lucky because um, some, you know, particularly law firms, particularly they seek international students and they offer them opportunities um, to work on internships. So, for example, uh, one of our the top tier law firms, they offer an internship. Now, previously they offered um, for the students to do part of the internship at UNSW in Sydney and the other part was overseas in China. Um, but this year, because of the um, pandemic, they actually sponsored internships for the students to take them overseas within China and they were they could do it remotely or they could go to the, the cities and be um, supervised on um, in, in the office if that was the purpose of the student. So there are multiple um, opportunities happening and the, the agencies and the law firms are adapting to that. So there are still opportunities overseas um, and, and our international students are sought directly because of their second language and because of their um, dual cultural experience, which helps with working with, with students. Um, I'll just go to the next question. Um, is census date the last day to drop class without any fee deduction? Again, I'll address this to the Dean. Let's hear it from the source. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, thanks, Siobhan. Yes, that's right. Uh, the, the purpose of the census date is to um, you know, signal to students when they need to make a decision as to committing to the courses they're enrolled in. Um, and that is the last date by which you can drop a course without um, uh, having to pay for it. That's right. And I'll stay with you, Andrew, for the next question, which is, do you have any updates on when the campus will reopen? Again, it's the million dollar question, but we're still going to ask it. <laughs> So uh, the, the university's position is that we will uh, be teaching um, off campus until flexibility week, which is week six of term three. Um, and then uh, we're hoping and the signs are even from what's happening more broadly in New South Wales uh, this week, that we will be able to uh, move to a phased return to campus. Um, in that sense, though, I think there, there will be a concern about it won't simply be like a like like flicking a switch. So I've used the word phase deliberately. Um, the number of people who will be using public transport to come to campus, the number of people on campus at any time is something that the university will need to take advice, medical advice from the um, state's chief medical officer and, and the government. So um, realistically, I think, uh, you know, we're hoping to have students uh, return from term, you know, towards the second half of term three. Um, but uh, I expect we will be, you know, we're obviously going to be mainly online uh, for the term, uh, but, you know, very much hoping to turn the corner as we enter the new year. Great, and I will just give you a third question um, and then I'll, I'll move to some career questions. Um, some of my courses, actually, I will direct this perhaps to um, Helen Gibbon. Sorry, Andrew, I will, as the Director of Undergraduate Studies, some of my courses that I have enrolled in still have not shown up in Moodle. Is there anything I need to have done? Um, if you're certain that you're enrolled in that course, well then once the Moodle page is published, as in once it's open to all students, it will automatically appear in your feed um, and you won't have to do anything else. The term, um, the term doesn't start obviously till Monday and I, I am aware that some Moodle pages are still in the process of being um, updated and haven't yet been published. If you're still concerned, perhaps to, you know by tomorrow that there's no page, I would recommend emailing your course convener to just get an update. Um, but there should be nothing that you would need to do at your end. It would, it'll automatically come up in your Moodle feed. Um, and Helen, while I have you there, could I get one more question? How are exams held? Does this differ on whether you are on campus or studying online? Yeah, um, well, pre-pandemic, it they, the exams were held in a physical space and they were invigilated to our exams. Now that we're all online, and this will certainly be the case for the remainder of the year, all courses that have end of term exams. The exams are held online and in the law faculty that mostly looks like take home exams 
over a period of days. So the question, the exam question will be posted to your Moodle page and then depending on the course, you'll have sort of between 24 hours, 36 hours or up to 72 hours to complete the exam at home in your own time and then you would submit your answer online. We haven't um, in the law faculty this term got um, very short invigilated online exams, rather we call them take home exams um, currently. Um, thank you, Helen, and I will just take this opportunity to mention that the Faculty of Law and Justice have advisors for international students, so they are academic staff who are there to support international students on the, the complex questions, navigating the systems, academic support. Um, so a whole range of, of support. So um, please, you know, get in contact um, with your international academic advisors. That's available to all international students and they're there to support you. If it is outside of their remit, they will refer you to the appropriate um, resources. Um, now the next question is for Leon Tyrrell. Um, would you mind giving some detailed suggestions of career planning to international JD students? It's a tricky one. Well, that's a tricky one. It's a, it's a great question. So just to follow up on what was said there about the International Student Support Advisors, if you're not familiar with it already, if you go onto the Law and Justice website under Student Life, there's a useful contacts page. And on that you'll see um, our names are all listed there as directors. And there's also the, um, the link to the International Student Support Advisors and the, a link that allows you to email the team if you're wanting to, to make contact with them. And, you know, to some extent they're relevant to this question as well, because you know, part of the support they provide is with um, dealing with the particular interests of international students around matters such as this. Now, just to go, going back to what Siobhan was saying earlier, it's hard to give specific advice on, on the career options because the beautiful thing about the Juris Doctor is the, the, the breadth of opportunities. So it's uh, we, we know that graduates of ours end up as you know in places as diverse as Geneva or um, in um, working for firms in Australia or working in, in governments or working in advocacy organisations, uh, etc. I think that the I mean, in a, in a practical sense, the best way to answer that is to, to make use of those facilities and those services that Siobhan was talking about, just to try early in your degree to make the inquiries, make the con I'm sorry, we appear to have lost Leon. Um, this is the world we're living in. Um, technology. So maybe while Leon um, is reconnecting, uh, there's a couple of questions that came in. Are there any criminology student related events that we can get involved in throughout the year? And how do I join societies? So absolutely. Google, just go to Google and, and put in UNSW Law Student Society or UNSW CRIMSOC. That's, you know, the easiest way to do it. Um, it's free. You join on online and you join up to get um, Facebook posts. Um, any events that the faculty um, organise um, will be posted on the Facebook posts by those societies, but also they run a host of events. OK, so for example, in, in, in setting up this uh, panel event that's coming up with the Australian Federal Police um, and uh, Director of Public Prosecutions, it is directed to both criminal justice students. So you might be thinking, but DPP, that's prosecution service, that's just lawyers. No, they do a range of other um, services such as witness um, protection, um, investigations, analysis. They are positions that are geared towards criminology students. So I would say get involved in everything, but sign up to the societies because we will post anything um, that we, the faculty are doing, but also the, the law societies and the crim sock societies run a huge amount of events themselves. So quite simply, Google it and join. Um, Leon, um, I don't know if you were able to rejoin us. We lost connection there very briefly. Uh, I apologise if there's a problem with the technology. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Back to your Perfect. question. Back to my question where I was just describing how useful your service is 
uh, I think it's just, I mean, just reflecting on my own time at, at university, when when you first start, there's just a range of jobs you're not even aware of. I, I'd not heard of working for a judge, for example, and I wasn't aware of the clerkship programs that that uh, that firms had and, and the opportunities that were there. And so just having the opportunity to, to learn about that, I think is pretty significant. And it's not, you don't have to have worked out your career by the time you start, as Siobhan said, but taking the chance to of what you want to do. Um, so uh, there's, it's, it's not possible for me to give you a sort of a detailed plan of what you, you might do because there's just so many possibilities. And really the, the biggest thing you're going to be doing in this next uh, phase is working out which is the, which is the, the, the path for you. Great, thank you. Um, so back to some, some more questions. What platforms do we need to use for online study? Um, I might go to Helen for that. Thanks, Shivana. As well. Uh, so logging on to Moodle is probably the, the main platform that you'll use. And then built in within Moodle, there will be um, links to your OK, so uh, we're having internet issues across Sydney, so I'm actually going to go over to the Dean. Yeah. Um, his internet is a little bit more stable. Thanks. <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh, so uh, I think, uh, and Helen might be able to be back online and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what she was about to say is when you log into Moodle, um, all of your uh, interactive classes have a link to what's called Collaborate, which is kind of a, a built in version of Teams or Zoom that you access and is scheduled inside your Moodle course pages. So that's the main platform that we use inside the faculty. There may be some uh, uh, courses. I know mainly some electives perhaps in the in the master's um, in the master's program where some of our teachers, particularly if, if they're practitioners who are teaching into, uh, into the faculty, may use Zoom or otherwise, but you'll be fully advised of that. But most of our um, courses, uh, and particularly say in the JD and the BCCJ, will be delivered uh, directly to you via Moodle and collaborate built inside of that. So it's a one uh, closed system. I got that right, didn't I, Helen? Yeah. Um, I think her internet might be still down, but I will also take this opportunity to say, you know, as, as Leon said, if you go to the UNSW Law and Justice website and you drop down Student Life, there are a, a range of resources there. And again, the My Law intranet. So you can go to the clinics, uh, internships, they are the work integrated learning, um, but also career service. And in there you will see the jobs board, you will see resources. Um, there is a question here, is there only one law society? Um, presuming you mean in relation to UNSW, yes, there is one UNSW law student society and then there is what is called CRIM SOC and that's for the CRIM criminal justice students. In relation to the law society of New South Wales, um, just for the international students who are joining us within Australia, there's the law society within New South Wales, the law society of New South Wales, they are the governing body. Um, for all practicing lawyers. Again, membership of the Law Society of New South Wales is free. Uh, you join as an associate, it's free to you. They have a lot of events, they have a lot of resources online. So again, join them today, start getting connected, start networking. Um, uh, another question, um, how can I do any courses outside the law faculty? Um, I see you are still unmuted, so I will go to you, Andrew, to answer that. Yeah, thanks. Um, I, th I think, you know, so it is possible to perhaps do courses in other faculties. Uh, it depends really what program you're in. Um, and so really it might be best to, um, you know, seek the advice of the um, uh, student support team in, in, you know, they're located physically on campus in the nucleus, but of course you can use that, you can access them online. Because of course the BCCJ is a program which is co-taught across um, the Faculty of Law and Justice and the Faculty of Art, Design and Architecture. Um, it does involve other arts courses that are built into its structure. Law is different from that, but it is possible, for instance, to do cross-institutional study 
um, to in fact study units at other um, universities, as well as of course, um, considering what options there are to perhaps supplement your program. So it will depend on the program in question. Um, Natalie might want to add to that about LLM though too. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Yes, it is It is particularly relevant for the LLM, so glad to have a chance to jump in because as part of the LLM of the eight courses that you're expected to do, you can uh, potentially choose two cross-disciplinary electives, which are courses uh, that are offered in other excuse me, other faculties within the university. So if you go on to the handbook and have a look at the structure of the program, you'll see there's a drop down list of courses you can do. And also, uh, though the program itself allows for two cross disciplinary courses, if you are doing the corporate commercial and taxation specialisation, then it's possible that you could do up to four courses through our taxation and business school as well because they feed in specifically to your specialisation. But just have a close look at the different rules in the handbook to see what courses are eligible in that regard and also happy to take any emails from you if you have specific questions about what will count and what goes towards which specialisation as well. So that that is another option to bear in mind, uh, particularly for our master's students. Thanks. Uh, before you go, Natalie, I have another question for you. Uh, is there a possibility of further study, postgraduate study, in criminology is a question from a student. All right, thanks Siobhan. Uh, within the LLM there is a specialisation which uh, focuses on uh, criminal justice and so within that you can take four courses as part of the LLM or indeed more courses than that uh, that will enable you to really focus in on uh, criminology and criminal justice uh, within the context of the LLM. It is possible to do the LLM even if you do not have a law degree in that situation. Um, what you have to do is there are two core courses that are required that provide you with a bit of a foundation to then be able to go on and do the more specialised law courses. So if you are studying the, the BCCJ at the moment, uh, then you can potentially come into the LLM afterwards to be able to do that specialisation uh, once you've completed the, the degree. So thanks for that, Siobhan. Great, and, and there is one more question. Um, I'm studying the LLM and uh, MBA. When will the bookshop open to buy books? And if so, how can I order? I'm looking for volunteers to answer that, but I'm guess Andrew, the Dean. Um, thanks, Andrew. Yes, I can say this from personal experience. I'm a, a frequent customer of the bookshop. The bookshop is operating online at the moment. Um, and so, you know, if you a, a bit, as Siobhan said, you can Google UNSW uh, Bookshop um, and they'll be able to um, post out materials to you. Um, a lot of texts, of course, are now available in digital uh, format as well. So, um, you know, once you've got your um, text list, you, you can perhaps buy direct from the publisher and instantaneously if, if you're happy to do that. And, and given the delay on delivery times at the moment, particularly if you're um, studying at some remove from the UNSW bookshop, that might be the best way to go. Um, thank you, Andrew. We've had a number of um, queries um, about uh, international networking connections um, and then coming back to campus. Um, if there is an opening, um, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, wrong question. Um, does UNSW Law and Justice have a networking group for international students on LinkedIn or Facebook? Um, and, and how might I go about joining that, especially when we can't meet in person? Yes, we mentioned that. I will go to Andrew in a moment, but we, you know, the law student advisors, they actually set up teams, meetings and groups for the international students to chat, collaborate, work together online and to support each other and get to know each other. Um, so absolutely, I, I encourage you today, all international students, reach out through the website, go down to um, the uh, you know student life and, and the law and justice um, international advisors and, and tell them you want to join. They will set up a team site and you will actually have your own networking. Is there anything further you want to add to that, Andrew? No, perfect. But yes, we, we're very conscious that, you know, the international students also support each other, but the advisors are also there to support you. So um, that addresses that question. Is there any update on the New South Wales International Student Quarantine Program that was paused due to Sydney COVID-19 lockdown? Andrew. 
Uh, yes, uh, well, I don't really have a, a firm update to it, except to say that because the New South Wales government had that plan and it was unfortunately um, put off because of the um, emergence of more COVID cases in, in June, um, the assumption is that um, you know they'll, they will revisit that plan. Um, the, the, I want to assure um, all international students on this call that the New South Wales government has worked really hard over the last year um, about trying to um, uh, provide travel options for international students so we can welcome them to Sydney. So with the news just today that a lot of things will be reopening in Sydney um, towards the end of uh, this month and next, uh, I am very confident that the international student plan will also um, be kicked back into operation. The, the Commonwealth government is talking too about, um, you know, new quarantining arrangements uh, which should facilitate the process of uh, an increased number of, of arrivals. And, and further to that question, there's another relevant one. Um, assuming international students will attend in-person classes after domestic students will already be back on campus, how might that hybrid learning look? So I, I think the approach that we have used uh, to date uh, has been to do a two stream really. So we've been offering fully online versions for students who have been unable to join us when we were able to welcome domestic students back to campus. And that seemed to work well. Um, we didn't really have the situation whereby an international student at that time was able to come back in the middle of the term and so therefore wanted to abandon their online experience and be in a classroom, though that would be a very understandable um, transition they might wish to make. So we haven't had to manage that situation of if I arrive in the middle of term, can I move to a physical class? And we'd need to see, I think, uh, what, you know, when we get to that stage. The idea of hybrid learning is something that the university is actively exploring and I know we have a teacher next term who will be running a class which will be, um, you know, sorry, it won't be next term, it will be um, next year, uh, that will be a combination of um, in person with for those students who are in the room and those who are, um, are participating remotely. Um, but at the moment, the standard approach uh, for the faculty and indeed across the university is to service the students depending on their circumstances online or in person. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, I have a question for Leon um, as the director of the JD program. Um, when we are enrolling in term three JD, um, are there only two subjects available this term? Could you talk to that, uh, Leon? Again, I think we're, we're having some internet um, issues with Leon. Um, we'll go back to Andrew, Professor Lynch. Thanks. Sure, thanks, uh, Siobhan. And uh, I'll do my best um, on this one, but uh, that's not the case. You should be able to enrol in your first three courses for the JD. So I would encourage the student who posted that question to get in touch with uh, student services um, or if that's bewildering on the website, um, if you can contact Leon directly. Um, so if you do a Google search for his name, um, you'll get his a link to his page on the university site and his email. But that's an important question and we want to make sure that you are um, uh, taking on your full load. If you're wanting to do three courses, you certainly can do so. So Leon can assist with that if um, uh, I'd be tempted to write to him direct. Thanks. Um, thanks, Andrew. Um, I have another question in relation to the JD. Um, this student is working full time and planning to study the JD part time. The maximum duration of the JD program is eight years. Do I need to submit an application to take advantage of this maximum duration? Or will it be understood automatically in the system when I enroll in classes? Don't worry, my boss knows I'm attending the O week. Uh, before I go to you, Andrew, though, I will just say that I did the JD part time um, as a new mom at UNSW and I took almost seven years and I got nothing but support. Um, I took terms off um, to go back to Ireland. Um, I did one subject, then I did a, you know, a term, then I did two. But then I, I, I did summer courses if I was available. I did you know intensives. So I think there's a range of opportunities. I sometimes took leave from my mum job. Um, I got my husband to take leave and stay at home and then, you know, knocked out a, an intensive over a week. So there are a whole range of, of options. Um, so my understanding is 
unknown participant. I never have to joining. put in any application um, and there are a lot of options. So keep your mind open to just doing sort of crash intensive summer courses, uh, work integrated learning um, and, and take your time. Andrew, anything further to add to that? I, I can't improve on that answer, Siobhan. It was uh, it was excellent and showed the flexibility that the JD program uh, 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 enables. And I think, um, you know, really the, the takeaway from what Siobhan has said is don't worry about it uh, at all now. But at any stage, if you want to talk about your program progression, um, because it's important really to do courses in the right uh, sequence, um, then just reach out for student services assistance. Um, but, but absolutely, the, the program is designed to be flexible and to accommodate part-time study that, of the kind that you're doing. And it is great that you've cleared with your boss that you're joining us this morning. <laughs> Um, I don't want to let this opportunity pass because I know that we have a lot of LLM students joining us today um, and, and, and that's a fantastic opportunity to just ask Natalie Klein without a specific question, but just to say, can you tell us a little bit about the LLM? Um, what um, sort of support is there for students? Um, what sort of progression they, they work through? Who they can sort of reach out to if they're you know changing their mind or they want to have a chat with someone? Just if you give us some information about the LLM, um, because our, I think our LLM you know uh, online people are a bit shy about posting questions. All right, thanks Siobhan. Uh, look, with the LLM, as I mentioned, uh, there's the two pathways in for students who are coming either with a law degree or without a law degree. So the important thing for those starting without the law degree is that you do your compulsory courses uh, at, at the outset because really they are designed uh, to be able to give you that basis as you go through the rest of your degree. The other things to sort of bear in mind as you're planning out the LLM is whether you want to do a specialisation or not. You don't have to decide that straight away uh, and some people kind of go through and they pick the courses that are of interest and then as they Unknown get close to graduation is now uh, make the decision that they can um, uh, actually take out a specialization. You don't have to do a specialization if you don't want to. You can just pick and choose the courses that you want. Uh, within the LLM uh, at the moment, obviously we're teaching online, but the plan is that we will be continuing online courses within the LLM into the future in any event. So I, I saw there was a question from uh, someone in Queensland about continuing online. I don't know whether you're in the LLM or not. Uh, but I did want to just reassure you that we will be continuing online co courses. It might mean that not every single course that you particularly want to do is going to be available online, but there will be a sufficient number of courses to be able to complete the degree. I think for next year's timetable, about half of the courses are still going to be fully online, and that will also help with the students who are still having difficulties being able to enter the country, but also for our interstate students. So that's just something to be aware of for the LLM. And if you're a JD student, uh, also just be aware that the courses within the LLM will usually be available for you as electives as you get to that particular part of your program. So you'll see at that point, particularly going to Siobhan's point about flexibility, that there'll be intensive evening courses um, that will also be able to accommodate different schedules as well. So. Hopefully we try to please as many people as we can in trying to um, uh, schedule the program and coming up with a, a diversity of courses across all the different interests. So I hope that's helpful, but yes, happy to answer any emails on specific points as well after this session. Thank you. Thanks very much, Natalie, um, and I can attest to that. There's a range of courses. Um, it, there's so many you know, courses that you know, you don't need to, to specialize straight away. You can actually start to figure out your interests and your skills um, as you move through the LLM. Um, I think that's actually the end of our questions. I see that we're, we're coming into our last few minutes of, of this um, webinar. And with that, I'll actually pass back to Professor Andrew Lynch, the Dean of Law and Justice at UNSW. Thank you. Thanks very much, Siobhan, uh, and thanks to my colleagues for being available to answer the questions. Um, thank you to all of you for attending. Um, this is obviously a very poor substitute for being able to physically welcome you to the campus and for us to meet you face to face and have lots of discussions with you, both in the formal part of the proceedings, but also then as people are sort of drifting out to the building and, and, and moving on. I mean, that's part of what we really miss about being online for O week. Um, but thanks for attending in such good numbers and for your questions, which are all excellent ones. I know I'm sure 
that you'll have more questions, please just don't hesitate to reach out to the faculty. Um, you can do that most, most um, efficiently through the student services uh, portal on, on the university website, but uh, you can also email your directors uh, who have been introduced today for those particularly thorny questions if you find that student services perhaps um, are suggesting that you need to talk to an academic in the faculty. Um, I want to thank Siobhan too for her presentation. The careers support provided by the faculty, as she said, is unique across the university. We're incredibly proud of the support that Siobhan offers our students and I encourage all of you to think about the things that she said and how you might start, um, you know, um, building those into your approach to studying your program. Um, thank you again and welcome again. And as you can see on the screen, there's a QR code. And if you scan that, that will then take you off uh, to a Law Society event. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll hand you over to that part of the proceedings and they can talk to you about all the fantastic work that they do and the Student Society culture on campus. Thank you and good day.